Alors, bonsoir. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this uh, regular public meeting of the Dieppe City Council on August the 8th, 2016. For the opening announcement, dear colleagues, let's have the serenity to accept the things we cannot change, the courage to change the things we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Good evening, everyone. Do we have a quorum? Yes. Any, any conflict of interest? None? Good. So, let's have a resolution to adopt the agenda. Please move by Councillor Leblanc, seconded by Councillor Cormier, that we adopt the agenda as presented. All those in favor say aye. Contrary minded nay. Carried. Presentations, uh, inquiries, and petitions. 7.1 presentation Dieppe Firefighters. Is there a one representative, Mr. Denny? Good evening. Well, wait. Mike, please. There. Before we begin the presentation, I just want to say to warn everyone that the Municipal Council room is not a legislative assembly such as the parliament or the provincial legislative assembly. So the things that are said here, if certain, if certain things could constitute a matter to uh, file a criminal charge, those people who speak are not protected by law, okay? Just to make sure that we are all on the same wavelength. All right? So, Mr. Diddy, the floor is yours. Good evening, Your Worship, counselors, uh, directors, ladies and gentlemen. The city of the app Fireman Union has filed a petition following the discharge of Chief Charles Leblanc after it was announced. I want to show you a few items to tell you why we undertook that petition. We believe that it would be a good idea to rehire him, reinstate him. Chief Charles Leblanc started as a volunteer fire, uh, fighter in 1990-1995. He was hired as a casual firefighter two years later. He was hired as the assistant fire chief in 1997 with only seven years of experience. He started as a deputy chief and he was able to be accepted by employees who had 10, 15, and 20 years of experience. In 2002, he became chief, fire chief. When he started as chief, I just want to give you a few overview of things that he did. He was part of the fire department on Gova Street. He participated also in bringing the 911 center to Dieppe, which at the time was supposed to be of a temporary nature, but we still have it as of today. He was responsible for the opening of the uh, fire hall on Dieppe Boulevard. While he was at the service, he saw to the growth of the uh, fire department throughout the city of Dieppe. After he started as chief, he maintained some good uh, labor relations with his employees. He established the program of first uh, respondent for medical uh, uh, causes. When the fire department ceased to give the ambulance service, the he saved the life of three firemen. The day of the baptism of his daughter, there was a fire. He left home. He went there. Three firefighters were trapped, and thanks to him, they were able to be saved. Something else we want to bring to your attention is that 
Chief LeBlanc has always protected the interests of the municipality, always had at heart the interests of the citizens, and he's a man who always listened to the public and to his employees. I've been involved with the fire department uh, as a for 34 years as a volunteer and full-time firefighter and is the best leader I've ever had. He was also a member of several committees with the New Brunswick Fire Chief Association. Chief LeBlanc is admired by several other fire uh, department associations, and you see we have some firefighters with us tonight. And he's always been a source of inspiration for his employees. So it is for these reasons that we are asking you to reconsider your decision. We distributed the petition, and I believe that uh, over 1,100 names signed it. I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak to you tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Is that it? That's it? Thank you. So this puts an end to this presentation. Now, on behalf of the municipality, I must tell you that the decision uh, dealing with the departure of this employee were based on facts and not on impression, on emotions or rumors. Following an exhaustive recommendation from the uh, uh, management of the municipality, the council approved it on July the 11th last. This difficult decision was the conclusion of a process that lasted several months, involved three outside external uh, consultants in human resources. Much time was uh, spent in, in uh, looking for uh, other solutions, but it became obvious it was in the interests of everyone that there should be a change in the leadership. Even though several of you wish to know the reason of his departure, the city has the duty and the obligation to make sure that any information contained in the file of an employee, present or past, remain confidential at all time. It would be irresponsible and illegal to reveal personal information from an employee to satisfy the curiosity of a few persons pursuant to the Information and the Privacy Act. The city provides the employee at this time the service of a consultant to help him with the research of a new position. We believe sincerely that it is in the higher interest of everyone that this process may follow its normal course in all privacy and that all this publicity is neither wishful or beneficial to this employee. All the options have been considered and the decisions was dearly thought. It is final. This file is closed. The city will no longer make comments on this uh, issue. Thing is lost in translation. I will also give those comments in English. The decision regarding this employee's departure was based on facts and not on emotions, perceptions, or rumors. Following a thorough and exhaustive recommendation from upper management, City Council approved it on July 11, 2016. This difficult uh, decision concluded a process that had lasted 
several months and involved three external HR consultants. A great deal of time was devoted to seeking alternative solutions, but in the end, it became clear that it was in the best interest of all involved for changes to be made to the fire department's leadership. Although a number of you would like to know the reason for this individual's departure, the city has the responsibility and the obligation to ensure that all information in a current or past employee's file remains confidential at all times. It would be irresponsible and illegal to disclose an employee's personal information to satisfy the curiosity of a few individuals by virtue of the Rights to Information and Protection of Privacy Act. The city is providing the employee with the services of a consultant for assistance in finding a new job. We sincerely believe that it is in everyone's best interest for this process to run its course in confidentiality and that all of this publicity is neither desirable nor beneficial for this employee. All possible options were explored. The decision was carefully considered. It is final and this matter is closed. The city will make no further comment on this matter. Next item, 7.2, inquiries by council members to the Kodiak Regional RCMP. Is there any question? Mr. Thibodeau. Thank you, Your Worship. Mr. Beauchene, I was told that we didn't see uh, the patrol often uh, travel around the uh, Ruiso uh, domain. Is it possible to maybe make a visit from time to time? I will make note of that comment from the citizen. I will simply make one comment we're doing at present, to be present everywhere, but it's impossible to be everywhere at the same time. We're very concentrated on the call that we receive. It's very important that they should call us directly. The reason I say that is because with the number of calls that we receive, if we are able to focus the uh, uh, places that are uh, that have more problems, it's uh, easier to visit these places. I will make note of what you said, and we'll look at them, but it's just a comment that I wanted to make as to sometimes we don't see the police because we focus our action in more problematic uh, areas. I will make a note. I'm aware that you're doing what you can, but citizen asked me, so I'm asking you. Thank you. I mean, no, but I know that you are going in the uh, Ruiso uh, area because I've seen you there. I was at the same meeting as Councillor uh, Thibodeau. The people were complaining that uh, since uh, it's on the liquor store road, sometimes the people use that as a small detour where there's less traffic, less uh, police uh, traffic, and they go faster than uh, is the norm. Excellent, thank you. 7.3, presentation, public transit shuttle service by Mr. Richard. Good evening, Your Worship, members of Council, dear colleagues. The presentation that you will have tonight, it's a shortened presentation for this public meeting, uh, considering the limited time that we have. So you have the whole presentation in your uh, package. Tonight's presentation aim to inform you as to the uh, public transportation. The municipality would like to have your comments as to what would be uh, favored by the municipality, as you know. The shuttle service has existed since September of 2013. It followed a less popular service. It 
allow us to improve several aspects. The shuttle service is a system that was uh, implemented. It was a, an innovation compared to what we had in the past, but it was also a pilot project. So with the analysis of that pilot project for the last three years with figures in hand, we are coming to you with consideration for future decision. The President's Service, we have two uh, trip that joins uh, 93 and 95. The distance of these uh, two itinerary are similar. Also, as for the number of uh, itinerary is similar in the pilot project, uh, Shuttle 93 is bonafide with a service on request, which means there is a fixed schedule, but the people from that area can call for the taxi bus or the shuttle service to make a connection with the bus service when a bus goes by in that area. The figures for 2015 show us interesting statistics when we talk about the two itinerary shuttle 93 and 95. What we realize is that there are more passenger per trip on the uh, shuttle 93, the one that uh, link Amiro to the uh, Lake Burn area. We can explain that with the fact that there is a bona fide service service on request, but when we look at the number of trip with the number of passengers, we notice that there are more passengers per trip, more people per trip on the uh, Shuttle 95, which is the one Amiro going towards uh, the Memorancook extremity. What this gives us is that the number of service on Shuttle 95 uh, saw the increase of the number of person per trip, but it seemed to have spaced the number of passengers uh, during the day, during the week. As a customer, we have more opportunities to take the shuttle. Sometimes we will choose what is more advantageous to us if we have more option. Maybe we will fix our own itinerary to leave earlier and come earlier, and that's what we find with these statistics. So the present time, we have an envelope of $140,000 in 2016. It gives us the number of trips that we see here. We had planned a reduction of service uh, because of the budget. We have yet to make that decision. As for the uh, 2016 budgetary uh, forecast, we have reduced the cost if the... the uh, the number of uh, requests are quite popular and people want to use it. That's why some trips on the schedule are not used. As we're able to see in your documentation, we have a fixed schedule, with me, which make it that there is not always someone on the return trip because we have a service on request. We offer you some alternative. Uh, so we've given you this uh, scenario for your consideration. We have six. There might be a seven or an eight that we didn't think about. But presently, these uh, are here for your information to see what would be the option in your opinion. We don't know. It, we did not decide on what would be preferable, but we have some preference. If ever we are asked uh, what would be our preference. Some consideration for you as a council. The first one is there is a possibility of a fixed uh, trip. It's a principle that came to us by a consultant in public transport that allow us to have a trip, even if it is designed uh, design to alternate according to the need. If we take Shuttle 95 on Amiro Street, in the Fox Creek going up to Bourgeois Center and back. It's quite fixed. But if we think of the development there is happening at the Belle Forêt, it's an example. If we had a trip on request, we could offer some service uh, to the people in that area, so when they call. But the shuttle is able to have a more flexible uh, trip. We can think at the end of the Boulevard with the 
a senior citizen nursing home who've been asking us to have a service. That's the kind of things that we could probably explore. Dear consideration, I may have mentioned it on the Belfort sector. We have to think of the change, the change of the co-op that would be relocated in the Dover area. That might be an interesting trip for kind of a flexible uh, itinerary. We think of the Dover Park that is not accessible at the present time at night or on weekend. These are all things that have to be considered. And the last thing, of course, our supplier, we had an agreement in September of 2013 that was renewed every year. It is expiring at the end of the year. We have to decide in September to undertake uh, the step either to renew or undertake a new process with the principle and the concept that the, co the, uh, that the council would like to implement. This is it. Next step is we hope to have the consent of the uh, council. What do we do with the private project? Do we bring it to a permanent shuttle service? We think that is the step to take or the kind of service you want to offer. As for the recommendation, we're not formally presenting you any recommendation today, but it is for your consideration, if I said. What I would like to know is what is your wish? Do you already have received comments? Uh, is there some information lacking to allow you to make a decision in September? So the last two slides that you have, uh, re the recommendation could look to what you have here. As I mentioned, we are convinced I am personally uh, convinced that presently the shuttle service is the most affordable uh, way of offering a service uh, to the citizens. We think it's there to stay, at least until the municipality decides to increase the number of service uh, throughout the city as a whole. But for the present time, the shuttle service is working with a shuttle, everybody is not happy, but uh, we don't have too many complaints. People who need to travel can do so. There is an additional transfer to make, but at the present time, where we're at as a municipality, we can foresee the permanency of a shuttle service until the municipality decides to grow. And the second one could look like this, in that the municipal council could uh, make a decision on the recommendations that are presented or one that we have not yet thought about. Maybe in September, this is the presentation I wanted to make tonight. If you have any comments or any preference from the councillors, I would be happy to hear them to uh, go ahead with the thoughts. Any comments or questions from the councillors? Mr. Anna. Mr. Richard, your worship, as for the participation of the public, where did the people uh, fill a questionnaire? Did we consult the people as to whether the services that are already uh, established working? Was something like that done with the public? To come to the uh, recommendation that we have here, no, nothing was done. But if we take the comments that we've heard over the years, we've, uh, uh, we took everything, put everything together, and we keep them uh, on file. But we have to know that when major changes were uh, brought to the public service, uh, over a year, we undertook some steps to find what are the interests of users and non-users to see what, what we should do. We made a major change in 2013. By bonifying the service, we changed the hours to 200 hours. It was following the comments of the people. We were able to do more with less. In this case, where we are proposing other scenario, we... Uh, did not consult the citizens, but I'm saying that if the council should decide on one or the other option, there might be a possibility to need to go with the participation of citizens. For instance, if we want to change some uh, a schedule, may be, might be beneficial if we have a decision to make to go see the users and to see 
what would be more advantageous to them, but we have to structure well the question that is to be asked. A long answer, but I hope. I agree, I agree. No, no. It's something that we must always do. We talk to people, consult with people, and that is something that the decisions are not made here at the council uh, on the run. It's something that has to be thought about. And I wish at least that we would have the participation of the citizens. Thank you, Councillor Tibido. Next. Thank you, Worship. Yes. There's one issue that bothers me when we talk about reducing the uh, Shuttle 93. It seems to be the one where we have the greatest participation. And I mean, you know, I don't know if there's any complaint. But it's not part of my ward. But in my ward, 93, it seems that it is a problem. That's where we receive the most uh, complaints. So I wonder why you want to reduce that one. We look at the six options on the table. A to F, we wanted to present to you all the possible options. Uh, we did not decide yet as to when... We favor, we put them all on the table, but by re before, uh, by reducing the service, some people would not uh, be happy with it. Thank you, thank you. Councillor Leblanc. Thank you, Your Worship. Personally, I believe that the shuttle service should uh, be permanent with the uh, public transport. Maybe we should have a discussion by adding uh, some regions inside the municipality, for instance, Belle Forêt, whether it's Domaine de Rousseau, on the uh, shuttle service. Uh, that might be a discussion to be had in the future because the shuttle service has to be available. If we, if we look at two shuttle or three shuttles, Per trip, there are costs associated to it. So I think that that is a study that should be made. Every region should be serviced by the shuttle service, and to what extent it's possible with the resources that we have. So I think that the shuttle service should be offered on a permanent basis. The outside regions, for instance, should have an option of using the public transport. If we remove the shuttle service, we're losing the service altogether. By my experience, the comment that I've heard is not perfect, but it's better than nothing. I wouldn't want to lose the service altogether. Thank you, Mr. Leblanc. Mr. Godet. Thank you, Worship. I want to talk about the deficit that you uh, uh, foresee, $30,000 you're saying. There is an increase in the participation of the citizens in the shuttle and whatnot. But how much of that deficit would be mitigated by the increase of the participation of the citizens? I know that the transfer is done between Kodiak and the city uh, for the uh, assets once or twice a year, is it really 30,000? Could it be less because of the increase in the number of persons that use the shuttle and use the bus? The analysis that I made is we have a deficit because the people use the service on request, uh, shuttle 93 that is. These are additional trips that were not planned, we estimated the number of uh, trips that people could take, but they seem to want to use it more than we had planned. So some trips where we have a fixed schedule when we have a shuttle and no, nobody takes it. That's why in some of the recommendation, we propose a service on request, which means for the client, if he needs a service, the service will be there. For the municipality, we only pay if someone is there. That's why we think there could be savings. Even though, like a, a 95 now, we say, all the bus uh, uh, itinerary, which are every hour or 30 minutes uh, 
uh, uh, uh, at the more traffic time. It's unrequestable when pe we, we make sure that people are using it. It's not pure science. There is a gray zone, gray area that we don't know, but we think we could have some savings to have fixed uh, trips that we are paying for, that we wouldn't pay for, and we have to decide, do we take example E, that would be a fixed itinerary on request, where we go and open the shuttle altogether. We see if a bus goes by, the shuttle is available. So this is the small differences. Option E could allow us uh, to go and contain the cost because we wouldn't know exactly the maximum that it could cost. It depends on the number of service that the council want to offer to the citizens from these two areas. Mrs. Sars, no. Thank you, Your Worship. Mr. Richard, if I understand, the service is not reduced. It's only uh, amended or modified. All we have to do is call and the service will be offered. That's true in option E and F. However, some of the other options that are proposed, there could be a reduction of service, even in option E. If we talk about a fixed schedule with service and requests only, the people from uh, Schedule 93, they have the service all the time. If we reduce it, it's a reduction. But as for 95, they only have the sur uh, shuttle service at the uh, uh, busiest time during the week. That's where D would be a matter of uh, balancing the two. That's another option that is presented to you. Thank you for your presentation. And I'm convinced that the issue will be coming back during the negotiations with uh, public uh, trans transpo that is uh, coming to renewal time or during the budget uh, estimate for 2017. Thank you. This concludes the presentation number eight. Questions by members of the public. Is there other than the question of uh, uh, than the petition, we said we were not talking about that issue anymore. If there's no question from the public, uh, on another issue than the one, it would be on the issue of the chief. Do you have a question? My question would be, Chief LeBlanc had the confidence of his people with all the changes that have been brought about for the last two years. Uh, the, the building of a new department, do you think it's uh, good to change the leader of the people and create an embarrassment or a people? I think we've answered your question with the statement that was read earlier. Thank you. So we'll proceed to number nine. You have a question, please? Your Worship, members of council, citizen of the city of Yep. I just want to make a parenthesis in the present context concerning Chief LeBlanc, that man uh, respected for his integrity by the people of New Brunswick the uh, Maritime Provinces and citizen of the city of Dieppe, do you think you were well informed to make the decision to let go Chief LeBlanc of his function? Would you be ready to reconsider your position and study the possibility of reinstating Chief LeBlanc in his position? We're not here to create a problem. We're here to show the problem that it causes in our unit, in the our kind of profession you know uh, your Worship, members of the RCMP, the RCMP can say, the confidence of a, a leader is very important. And today there is really a destabilization by the absence of Chief LeBlanc, as you can see. 
people who are not necessarily from the app but represents the unit of the fire department, it would be interesting to eventually bring back on the table the issue of Chief Charles Leblanc. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your question, says the mayor. Item nine. Is it on the same question? I've told you already, we've answered the question to which we were going to win. Have a good evening. Item nine, adoption of minutes 9.1. A motion, <coughs> Councillor Thibodeau, move the adoption, seconded by Councillor Brideau. Are those in favor? of adopting the minute for the meeting of July the 11th, say aye. Contrary minded nay. Motion is carried. <laughs> Item 10, 10.1, expansion DF, 10.1.1, Mr. Melanson. Thank you, Your Worship. You, you have before you a file on the purchase, a land purchase, and this uh, has to do with street extension project of Industrial Street towards Highway 15. Within this recommendation, you have in front of you a purchase, a purchasing, a purchase for 2005 plus HST, and the account is identified with the resolution. This action is part and parcel of the global plan of uh, destination 2040. And this allows to make a connection to highway uh, to Route 15 in the future. The planning will continue with this action tonight. For the reading of the resolution, Councillor Gadet, thank you, Worship. That council authorizes the purchase of the property identified under PID, PID 01004076 and located on Baba Street at a cost of $205,000 plus HST for the industrial street extension project up to the Route 15 interchange and further authorizes that this expense. Uh, Expenditure be different from account number 3-3-3558-7615, general capital budget, land purchase. I so move. Moved by Councillor Godet, seconded by Councillor Cormier. On the question. All those in favor say aye. Country reminded nay. Carried. 10.2 engineering, 10.2.1. You have here a tender award for the construction work of Play 1604. It was presented with an agreement that was presented and adopted by council. We had the responsibility of uh, making a development around the hotel following a tender call. We received uh, two answers. The one recommended is Acadian, uh, the cost of $64,000 uh, plus HST. And we have engineering service uh, that is XP service at a cost of $73,000 plus HST and the accounts are identified with some transfer in order to retrieve uh, the funds uh, to realize this contract and to finalize the development around the hotel uh, project for the reading of the resolution. Councillor Arsenal, thank you, Worship. That council awards the tender for the downtown Dieppe place 1604 site work project to the lowest bidder construction Acadienne 1991 limited at the cost of 764,000, 465,000 plus HST and also awards the tender for engineering services relating to said project to EXP Services Inc 
at the cost of $73,600 plus HST and authorizes these expenditures be defrayed from account number 3-3-35-58-7625 General Capital Budget Downtown Investment. That council further authorizes the following budget transfers to account number 3-3-35-58-7625 General Capital Budget Downtown Investment. Transferring the amount of $100,000 from account number 3-3-35-58-7629, General Capital Budget, Paul Street, Resurfacing, and transfer in the amount of $160,000 from account number 7-4-20-12-8910, General Operating Reserve Fund. I so move, Your Worship. Moved by Councillor Sano, seconded by Councillor Cormier on the question. Uh, Mr. Ayla, on the question, first question. My, Mike. When did the council vote for, uh, on this? The agreement was adopted, uh, if I remember, uh, last fall, the former council, Mrs. Spencer, if I may. I see that we got a good deal, but will all the work be done uh, with the just around the hotel? It's not obvious exactly what is involved here, Mrs. Uh, Mr. Your Worship. The work is really the development around the site of the hotel. It includes a break between the development on 200 Champlain Street and the hotel, where, which presently has some asphalt. It will be replaced by brick. But the project is really the development around the site to complete place 1604. So it's completely separated from uh, the uh, traffic circle. When the uh, surrounding is, is completed, will there be further work? Or will it help to uh, complement the work? There's a little bit of brick. Uh, on the side of the city hall, but the other edge, Mr. Burke would uh, confirm a part and a parcel of the uh, construction. Will there be will there be more sidewalks that will accommodate the further to what has been voted? What was voted, Your Worship, in April for the ice surface? All the elements, including the sidewalk that will be on each side that was relocated, is part and parcel of the contract that we gave. This project here, as mentioned by Mrs. Spencer, will include also between the hotel and the ice service, but it would have been done whether there was a project or not. So it really completed the place 1604. Last question. This will also... There will be a pedestrian link that's on the street, on Gova Street, right? I have the design in front of me. There's brick all uh, around the hotel. It allows behind the building of 200 Champlain. You can follow the brick and you can go through the back. All around the hotel, there's brick. It will allow you to walk on Gova Street also. I don't know if I'm explaining myself properly. Well, according to the design we have here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Brideau. Thank you, Your Worship. So, following the question that was asked by Councillor Ida, we're not talking about the construction of the service. It's only development, so there are other expenses to cover the uh, the piping and everything else. Yes, that's right. So these are monies that were voted in the tender that was given at the first meeting of the new council. 
if I may worship, no matter the ICE uh, service project, well, even if there had been no project of the ICE, this would have been done uh, anyway. The hotel and everything else, if I'm not mistaken, the building on the other side of the market. But between the ICE service and the market, there will be a pedestrian uh, alley. Um, I forget the width, but that would have been there notwithstanding. There was a, a place to walk where the people could park, but this will be converted into a pedestrian alley. I understand that. Any construction will always bring other development, but it's kind of... Uh, not talking about the ice service per se. It's everything that is surrounding this ice service, the hotel, especially. If there's no other questions. I'll do that favor. Say aye. Country reminded nay. Carried. 10.3. In the pro subdivision, in the planning, it is recommended to have an extension of Blanchard and Toba. So it is recommended. The staff is recommending it is for a final decision by the council tonight. For the reading, Councillor Thibodeau. Your Worship. That council accepts the recommendation of a planning advisory committee pertaining to the tentative plan approval for the Bro subdivision, which provides for the extension of Blanchard and Thomas Street, as indicated in said subdivision, plan dated July the 2016, job number 20161674 0100. I so move. Moved by Councilor Dibodeau, seconded by. Councillor Cormier. Some people are tired. On the question, Councillor Leblanc. Thank you, Your Worship. What kind of budget will be, uh, will apply to this resolution? Mrs. Spencer. Thank you, Your Worship. This development will be part and parcel of a subdivision agreement. However, it's part of a global uh, project of the realignment. We've started uh, phase one with the intersection of industrial, shopping industrial. So it's part of that global. But this section, the developer will be responsible for this part. So it's coming to the council for what? I don't understand the resolution. Why? The developer will build. What are we approving tonight? Mr. Fernet? Your Worship, to answer the question from Councillor Leblanc, as you know, every time we have the extension of a, of a street, the development officer, before he can approve the subdivision plan, must ask the advice of the planning commission. We must make a recommendation to you before the officer can uh, approve, then the PAC must make uh, its consent. That's why we're presenting tonight to follow the legal process according to the Planning Act. In the future, we'll have a subdivision plan to approve. It's the plan that you have in front of you. It's the plan of the extension of Thomas and the extension of Blanchard. It's the creation of two lots. However, tonight, it's only for the two extensions of, of Blanchard Street and the extension of Toma Street. Thank you. We will create an alignment with uh, Industrial Street. Mr. Gaudet, Your Worship, just to mention the job number in the recommendation is different than that in the resolution. 
there is a seven added to it that is not in the document. I don't know if it's important or not. The resolution is important, the document, well. What is the true, Madame de Jardin, what is the, the real number, the job number? Sugadet, can you tell me in the memorandum to the municipal council the recommendation you have job number 20164010 and here in the resolution it's 2016740 and there's no 7 in the memorandum in the uh, which one is good should we correct the resolution or adopt it as is I'm checking in the planning, uh, in the subdivision. I'm looking for the job number. So the seventh is there according to the plan at the bottom of the page. So at the bottom of the page, J.R. Daigle. No question, Mr. Ella? On Thomas Street. And of course, there is an intersection, Thomas. How will we join it to the Thomas that exists now with the creation of the road? Will it go behind Danny Street and the Varen? Essentially, yes, yeah. Okay. <laughs> will we take the Varen Street to go on Thomas Street? From the Varen Street? Immediately after it was that turning to uh, to reach or to join La Frau Street, it was part of the transport plan from uh, quite a few years back. Mm -hmm. We could have provided it uh, for information purpose the uh, existing street Thomas it will simply uh, turn on La France. Yes that part of the street will exist, but we have to leave the alignment to join the existing part. Thank you. Thank you. If there's no further question, all those in favor, say aye. Contrary-minded, carried as presented. 11 municipal bylaws, none. Notice of motion, did we receive any? No. Inquiries and announcement by members of council. So we will begin tonight. On my left, Councillor Ada. Mike, Mike, it is with sadness that we heard the that of Councillor Pepsi Landry, who is a councillor of the city of Moncton. He worked for 20 years with the Boys and Girls Club of Moncton. He was a member of the Legislative Assembly as a member of Moncton North from 1999 to 2003. 
He was in his third term as a counselor for the city of McDonough, the city of Pepsi. He was a good friend. He was a, a, a man who was uh, honest. I certainly miss him. I can say he was a friend of Dieppe. When he was sitting at the legislative assembly, he worked on two interesting files. The first one was the uh, Amir Azri, when Pre Premier Lord at the time wanted to asphalt the government, wanted always to do uh, Amir and Pepsi work with Saïd Ebla. And they came to an agreement with the mayor Lapierre at the time. And it's something in the whole file of uh, Dia Boulevard and Assumption Boulevard and the Wheeler Boulevard. At the time, these were all in a project of infrastructure in 2003, 2004. He was a champion, an individual that we will miss very much. His smile and his beautiful blue eyes. That's it, and I would like to offer my condolences to his family, Jacqueline, uh, Michel, and Mark, on behalf of the city. My first announcement, your worship, is there will be a whole file of activities planned during the Pride Week. The key will be the parade, which is next Saturday on the 20th. They will bring a lot of people to Greater Moncton. The event of 2016 for the Pride Week, uh, which is something new. There will be a tour by bicycle uh, in remembrance of the Orlando murder. So I want to raise the flag this Saturday at August 13 at the Riverview Town Hall. I wish them a good week. It'll be very interesting. Thank you. I want to thank you also for having represented Mr. Baldi during uh, the funeral of Pepsi. We appreciate your presence. Uh, thank you, Mr. Sarsnow. I have the same feelings towards uh, Pepsi Landry. A lot of respect for that man, and thank you for everything you've said. I concur. The other thing that I want to mention is on July the 13th, I had the chance of knowing what it was turning of the soil. It was the TriStar Mercedes uh, press conference. Ian Brett was a uh, uh, spokesman. We liked the experience, and the, the deputy mayor was there, and I was proud to be there with him. It was a good experience, and I thank you. Thank you, Councillor Thibodeau. Thank you, Your Worship. I believe that the sympathy to Mr. Landry's family appropriate. That's the only thing I have to say tonight. Thank you. Councillor Brido. Thank you, Ship. Uh, well, I would simply uh, uh, the occasion of the important uh, holiday that is forthcoming to raise the three colors to Acadians all over the world. Happy Acadian Day and a happy kite uh, festival and a beautiful remain, remainder of the summer. Councillor Cormier. Thank you, Your Worship. I had the opportunity or the honor of representing the city in Dorchester for the uh, Whistling uh, Festival. The official ceremony was held bilingual. I congratulated the mayor for that uh, action. I also represented the city I ate some hamburger in Bobasai S during their official barbecue. Shidiak Kapile uh, uh, was represented. I would like to invite the people to participate to the Kite Festival. The festival is starting Wednesday and will conclude Sunday to our citizens, to all the visitors from outside the municipality. I invite you to 
get this program. I have some if you want one. The program of the festival is inside this pamphlet. And I also wish a happy Acadian Day on August the 15th to all the Acadians. I received a complaint from Bob Bassin as to the number of hamburgers you ate. Councillor Leblanc. Thank you, Your Worship. I would have a question following the filling of the holes on Amirolo Street. I was wondering if the patching uh, work was done in that area. I can answer in part. Mr. Burke can com complete uh, or can add if there's something that I don't say. We're almost completed the work. Uh, the lack of not, the deficiencies have not been uh, filled by the contractor. I know Mr. Burke has some update on the uh, work project. We're still awaiting the file on the Chablais, uh, but on the Amiro is the problems that uh, have to be uh, your Worship, Mr. Burke has more. We're discussing with the contractor as to the lack or the deficiencies, and I wish that by next week we could come conclude the action that we uh, have taken so to make sure that it's completed and there will be the end uh, the, from Chartersville to the intersection as far as Beaubassin. No, Beaumont, sorry, which has yet to be made, it should be undertaken in the next few weeks. It's coming. I would have a clarification, Your Worship. The sector after Pelagie Street, up over the curve, some places the patching was done, but in the middle of the road, there still some potholes that were not filled. And when we painted the line, we filled with the paint and we continued. I know when the water starts uh, flowing, we will have a pothole that will be five times the size. It might be a turkey hole instead. Maybe we could see what we can do as far as filling is concerned. I went to to look uh, at it, and there's one place. It's it's quite uh, quite major. We'll, we'll do a follow up. Nothing else. Nothing else, Mister Blah. No, that's it. Thank you, Mister Gaudet. Thank you, Your Worship. First, I would like to express a thank you, on behalf of some citizens, who mentioned a safety problem that we have on the uh, cycle uh, trail where we had to uh, put some covert and it was uh, installed within three weeks. Uh, we saw one and there were 11 similar ones. They were all installed. Thank you very much to the staff for having acted so quickly. To mention that one of our uh citizens uh, by the name of Ann Jameson, who uh, lives in Dieppe on Amiro, has just published a novel, uh, an English novel uh, about, uh, it's a story similar to uh, the Book of Negroes, and it takes place in the Guysborough County area. I read the novel, it's a really good novel, and I wish to congratulate her on that novel. I think she's going to be having a launch soon, but you can buy the book uh, at any time you want. So I'd like to congratulate her uh, as a citizen of Dieppe. She's been with us for 12, 15 years and a good citizen. So that's it. Career in, uh, in the public service. In public service. Yes, in Ottawa, Singapore. Uh, okay. Thank you. Merci. Thank you. Uh, also, I want to express to the Landry family my most sincere condolences. I got to know Pepsi Landry while he was working for the Boys and Girls Club of Moncton. I was very involved with the Boys and Girls Club of Dieppe at the time. 
at the beginning of the 1980s. That's when I got to know him. And we went through the same. He went to the province. I always remained at the municipal level, contrary to him. I got to know him and appreciate it very much. Once again, sincere condolences to the family on behalf of the city of Dieppe. That's it for tonight. Have a good evening, everyone. Thank you.